actor Alec Baldwin charge what he's now facing in connection with that movie set shooting. Track and field tribute, how USC is honoring one of its most decorated athletes, Alex and Felix. Hello everyone, welcome to The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston, more on those stories coming up in a moment. But first, President Biden is visiting California to see some of the destruction from the recent powerful string of storms we had. His visit includes this wharf in Santa Cruz County, the Capitola Wharf, ripped apart by punishing waves. A local business said the storm-damaged wharf is expected to be closed for a year. The president is also taking a helicopter tour. The clock is ticking for Congress to act on raising the debt ceiling as the United States maxes out its borrowing limit. But Democrats and Republicans are at a stalemate over that. Republicans want spending cuts before raising the debt ceiling, but the White House said no to that. In the meantime, the Treasury Secretary said she's taking extra steps to buy a few months, and that could bring us to June. But if Congress doesn't act before then, many experts warn of dire consequences. That could mean millions of people may not get certain benefits such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. The impact of a default could also send shockwaves through the stock market, and many believe a recession would be inevitable. Finally, a break from the rain, but for how long? Meteorologist Shana Mendiola lets us know what to expect in your first alert forecast. Okay, some changes for the weekend. Things are looking dry, just looking at a little bit of wind move back in from a ridge of high pressure offshore. This is going to shift our weather conditions and make it mostly sunny all the way through the weekend and for the beginning of next week. Really not seeing any storms as this keeps all of them off bay here to the north, looking a little bit warmer as well. So as you look at the seven day forecast, we don't have any chances of rain as we head to the weekend or for the first half of the week. Temperatures are going up and we may be close to 70 degrees by next week. Wednesday thanks to those offshore winds. So we're following that forecast and we'll have the latest on NBC. Back to you. Actor Alec Baldwin is being charged with involuntary manslaughter in the movie set shooting that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins. She was killed in 2021 on the set of the movie Russ when a prop gun held by Alec Baldwin went off. Baldwin has said he pulled back the gun's hammer but not the trigger. The film's armorer who was in charge of weapons on the set was also charged with involuntary manslaughter. Hutchins' husband has settled a wrongful death lawsuit against Baldwin and other producers. If convicted, Baldwin faces up to 18 months in prison and fines. Funeral services are set to take place this Saturday for the Riverside County deputy killed in the line of duty. It'll take place in Rancho Cucamonga with a public viewing happening at the Murrieta Valley Funeral Home the night before. Wednesday night, people filled the Murrieta Town Square Park with candlelights to honor and remember Deputy Darnell Calhoun. His family is well known in Murrieta and owns a barbecue restaurant there. Deputy Darnell was shot and killed on Friday while responding to a domestic violence call in Lake Elsinore. He's the second deputy in the department to be killed in the line of duty within days. It may have been one of the most dangerous chases we've ever covered. News Chopper 4 was overhead as a driver almost lost control of his car several times as he tried to get away from CHP. Oh, 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 oh that's a wobble. It's not going to be able to correct it. It's shooting. It's crossing. Oh, oh, my goodness. He got off the gas and he saved the death wobble. Oh, my goodness. The CHP initially tried to pull the driver over for speeding on the 60 and diamond bar, but he refused to stop. Speeds reached over 100 miles an hour as we saw several close calls. The pursuit ended when the driver lost control and hit a fire hydrant in Downey. He ran out, but officers caught up with him at an apartment complex parking lot and tackled him. CHP believes the driver was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Police are searching for a driver involved in what appears to be a road rage shooting along a busy stretch of Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. It happened Wednesday afternoon at the Chevron at Crescent Heights. The husband of the woman who was shot didn't want to go on camera, but tells us it started with road rage. He says someone in a gray Honda was driving dangerously near his truck. When he shouted at the driver, the person pulled out a gun. The bullet went through the passenger side and hit his wife in the shoulder. We spoke to another woman who pulled into the gas station soon after the shooting. I was trying to check and see if I won the lottery, and I guess I won the lottery by not being here. You just can't even do anything. You can't flip people off, you can't smile, you can't do anything. You just have to just try to get out of the way and maybe, you know, I'm just hoping she's okay. The woman was taken to the hospital. The LAPD is now looking for the person who was driving that gray Honda. 
LA residents are now required to put food scraps and food soiled paper into their green bin. It's the same bins where you put your yard waste like leaves and grass. The city of LA rolled out the Organics LA program this week as mandated by Senate Bill 1383 to reduce organic waste disposal from landfills by 75% by 2075. The sanitation department has conducted a similar pilot program collecting compostable material curbside since 2019, but it's now expanding it effective immediately. But what goes into the green bin? You can now put fruit pills, vegetable scraps, eggshells, spoiled bread and pasta into the green bin, as well as meat, fish and shells. Coffee grounds and filters should also go in the green bin and any paper products like pizza boxes now have a designated place for recycling. But do not put plastic and glass in there along with stickers and rubber bands that often come with fruit and vegetables. There's also a full list of what should or should not go into the green bin on NBCLA.com. The University of Southern California is honoring one of the most decorated athletes. The Trojans track and field home will be renamed after Allison Felix. Allison is the most decorated U.S. track athlete in Olympic history with 11 medals, seven of them gold. And on top of that, she's a proud mother and a champion for women's rights. This is uh, huge, you know, when President Folt shared the news with me. Um, she said that it was really because of my character and integrity and wanting the students to see that. And to me, for the university to celebrate that um, just really spoke volumes. What a great honor. The university will officially dedicate Allison Felix Field in April. A new season of Ted Lasso is on the horizon. Apple TV Plus unveiled its first look at season three. The show will return in the spring. In the first look photo, Ted and Nate are seen staring each other down. Now you'll remember at the end of season two, Nate left Ted and AFC Richmond for their rival team. Fans also noticed that the announcement did not say whether the new season will be the show's last. The creators have said in previous interviews that they've envisioned a three season arc for the show. If the Lakers are looking for some more shooters, and they should be, they might want to look around the crowd at the Crip. The team has struggled with their three-point shots this season, but their fans certainly have not. So for the third time this season, a fan pulled out of the stands, sunk a half-court shot. Can you believe it? Wednesday night's long-distance bucket won David Metcalf from Valencia a whopping $70,000. Earlier this season in November, Lakers fan Joshua Moore and Jamie Murray hit their own half-court shots in back-to-back -back games. It's the first time that's happened anywhere in the NBA since 2019. They got skills. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune in to Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with the traffic reports throughout your morning commute. I'll see you next time on The Rundown.